morning, Jubilee. We welcome you this morning. We welcome everyone that's watching online. We love you. We're so excited that you're with us today. I speak shalom, peace over our house. I speak shalom, peace over wherever you're watching from, your home, your bedroom, your body. Um, right now, I just feel like there's a spirit of peace in the room peace that passes all understanding, that guards our heart, guards our mind in Christ Jesus. And he's alive in this room, and he's alive in this room on the inside. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for your beautiful, strong anointing that you carry, that you are when you step foot into a room. I thank you, Father, that you are the great I am. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so our eyes look at you this morning, God. We declare your power and your authority in this room. And we give you our worship and all of our heart this morning because you're worthy. And we welcome you in Jesus' name. And we're just going to join with our precious Shofar team in welcoming the Lord this morning.
just welcome you in this place, God, this morning, God. We just welcome you here, God, with all the stuff going on in Israel and in the Middle East, God. We know that you're at the gates, God. We know that you're at the door, God. And we just welcome you. We just sing Maranatha. We just say, our Lord is coming. Our Lord is coming to our rescue. He's coming. He's at the door. And so we just lift your name up high, God, and we make a way for you, God. We make a way for the Lord to come into our praises, God, to come in, Lord. We expect you, Lord. We receive you, Lord. We wait for you. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's sing when we see you. And when we see you, we find strength.
everybody shout how good the Lord is. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are so good. You break down every wall, Lord. I just pray, Lord, depression is no more. Anxiety is no more, Father. Flood our hearts. Flood our hearts. You are so good, Father. You are so good. Thank you, Lord.
Let's just put our own voices, our own hearts worship on our lips. As the team plays, just tell him who he is. Speak to the atmosphere. Speak to our own heart. Remind our heart who he is. You're holy and righteous and beautiful and faithful and true. Faithfulness and truth. Oh 
us. We say your name, Jesus. 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 We were just told to sing his name over families and nations in darkness, into depression, in discouragement. So wherever you find yourself or wherever your assignment has placed you in the midst of a battle, now, there, let's say his name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Whoa, wow. You may be seated. Do you feel how much more powerful that became once we got focused? Because the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Jesus, wow. Hebrew, uh, Genesis chapter 13, uh, Barb, right when Melchizedek comes to meet Abraham. I pulled up the verse, but I forgot it. I think it's like 33. It's after the slaughter. He goes, Genesis 13, Abraham went up to Egypt, he and his wife. Uh, keep going. No. All right, forget it. Just turn it off. I'll get confused and it's not worth the, worth the effort. I know the story personally. You know, we are, uh, just want to encourage us as we give. We want to release our tithes and offerings. We are at a, at this year date, we have about a $33,000 debt deficit that we believe. I want to see I hope you do too. I want to see it retired before the end of the year so we can end the year with God's prosperity. I, uh, today's reading in 2 Corinthians 9 gives plenty of practical dis- uh, directives and giving. But I felt while we were worshiping, especially uh, in the hour we're in and the, what's happening in the earth and especially in Israel, is it's, uh, this is the time where God wants to e- do exploits in his covenant people with we are covenant people Israel's a covenant people and Abraham went because his lot his nephew was taken captive and swept out of in a war and he went up north from where he was in Bathsheba area all the way above the Galilee to Dan and he all the way up to Damascus he had to to take down the four kingdoms that took the five kings which included Lot. And when he came back, he had come with a great spoil. And that often is the moment the devil, in however he operates, whether it's in a personal crisis in finances or a global, global effort, right? Like now in the nation of Israel or the pandemic, he has an intention to destroy and steal and to kill. And Jesus has an intention to give life through it, and more abundantly. So when Abram returns, he has a, a wealth. He is absolutely undisputed in the wealth that he carries. And he, Melchizedek, which I believe was Jesus appearing in the priestly ministry, he's held, but has now been appointed and the, as the son of God from his resurrection glorification. But he appears to Abram with bread and wine, covenant and Ab- and he blesses Abraham he says blesses Abraham God of most high, God whose God is most high and he says blessed is the God most high who's given you this victory and in this hour and in that exchange Abram gives a tenth of everything 
He just literally gives him a tenth of everything because that's where the whole tithing began. It's, it's the result of a breakthrough. It's to give God the first of what he's doing. And then Sodom, king of Sodom, meets him, which is the picture of our world system. And he says, no, I don't care about, uh, you, you just, just give me the people, you can keep the stuff. And that's not how God thinks. He wants the people. He wants the freedom. And he says, nope, I'm not getting in covenant with you. I've lifted my hand to God most high. He's the possessor of heaven and earth. And I will not take a a shoestring from you, a shoelace. I don't want anything because you're not going to be the one to say one day, I made Abraham rich. So he wasn't planning to be poor by serving God. He was planning to become a nation. We just read in second, First Chronicles chapter 1, the entire history of beginning with Adam all the way leading us, will take us to uh, the, uh, the kings of Israel. And God is intent on establishing a kingdom. So what I'd like to do in prayer right now, I am sure that the majority have a place of testing in their finances. Anybody have a place of testing in your finances? Why don't we declare the name of Jesus? Why don't we receive the victory? Why don't we acknowledge that God's promise to to bless will be performed even in the conflict? It will be overwhelm the conflict and God will bring great breakthrough. And then let's worship him and honor him with the tithes and offerings and anticipate, anticipate, because it was after that, after that, chapter 15, I, I messed you up, Barb, because I was 13, yeah, it was, and that was really 14 was the story. After that, Abraham, God appears to Abraham and gives him the land. So there's, there's stuff that's coming that God has appointed in the Son that we can begin to prepare our hearts to receive from the Son, statements, declarations, the nations for his inheritance, the ends of the earth for his possession. Okay? So, place yourself in your dilemma, in your struggle, in the bad news, in the pressure that you're in, and without the resource of your own ability, take the name of Jesus, and let's begin to say his name into that place, into the deficit, in the name of Jesus. We come with the name of Jesus, to advance with Jesus. Hebrew and Greek, prosperity means to advance in the purpose of God. So in the name of Jesus, we say to that which is withstanding the work of God in our life, that we would would cause a, a pulling back. We say, no, there is not just a pulling back. There's an advancing. And there is a rescuing. And children rescued, businesses rescued, promises that are being now rescued because you don't give promise to have the promise diminish and and be destroyed. It may fall into the ground to die, but there is a resurrection. So in the name of Jesus, say his name again. Jesus. Say his name, Jesus. 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 Now, Lord, wherever we are in our journey, we're not finished it yet. And so right now we honor you with a tithe and offering and we anticipate your coming to us, speaking words of life, even in this service, even this hour, in the name of Jesus. Receive our tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead. We'll worship in our giving. Speak the name of Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name is
the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name priest you are king you are lord you are seated at the right hand of majesty on high there you receive our tithes and offerings from there you command blessing from there you rebuke the devourer from there you call forth fruition and completion on all godly assignments given us and so we praise you take and receive now this which we freely give back to you that you might command the blessing that's not enough room for us to receive, not enough places for it to be sowed. We declare this now and receive it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be, take a moment, greet one another, welcome each other, give a good word to somebody, and we'll say hi to everybody online. Good morning, good morning. It is so good to have you here with yeah, us yeah. online. I want to just tell you that we speak Jesus to mm. you. We've heard so many times this morning the word victory, and we're just declaring victory over every circumstance yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah, no matter where you are, or what you're facing, or how you're feeling separated. The name of Jesus carries all deliverance, all life, all salvation, and literally it transports us to where we are in Christ, seated with him at the right hand of majesty on high. So allow that truth to just kind of soak and change the atmosphere from inside out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, can we get... We're going to pull everybody in. I want to, we've got a, I'm going to, I've got a video to show you. I want you to be able to see it. So in a moment, we've got, this is a, a focus next 10 minutes on our children's ministry. We have the Anabakaris that are preparing to be leaving. Uh, you guys can watch the video. You don't have to miss the video. So let's go ahead, dim the lights, please, and turn the video on.
we'll, we'll go down there. Okay. I love that Jesus allowed the little children to come to him. He blessed them. I believe that it's the heart of the Father that kids not only know the truth of the gospel, the scriptures, but that they meet the one who the Bible is all about. So our heart in children's ministry is that our kids experience God in a way that stays with them the rest of their life. Beautiful things are happening. <laughs> are being ministered to, they're understanding the gospel, they're understanding how their lives are important and how God has a plan for them and loves them. If you would like to be a part of children's ministry as a teacher, an assistant, or a floater, and serve once a month, please sign up in the back. We would love to have you. Can we have the Anabakaris up, and can we, Heather, will you come up? And right in the very back, you'll see pictures of the children you saw at that table. We are longing to enlarge the team. And you'll understand why, because today's the day. Uh, come on up. We are preparing to send the Inabakaris to Florida. They are, Eddie has a new job, and God's sending them at the end of this month. And today... It, we want to pray over them and bless them. And then um, Heather's stepping in as an interim leader for the children's ministry, and we want to pray for her and receive her. And, and then uh, next week, the, all the children's workers, and if you sign up, you're going to be a part of the children's lunch that's going to be just for, to collect the whole family. And this is, a, this is going to be a big, a big, uh, big, big, family to it's gonna be a big hole yeah there you go that, that's the best way to say it uh, if any of you know Remy you know she can come in and um, just command the whole room to get their seat belts on and listen to the Lord and have a good time all at the same time I as an adult I love when she teaches she's very very entertaining besides Get, you know, being able to speak the truth right into the center of your heart. And so I believe it's going to take all of us stepping into that place that she's held for a while for yeah, us. Yeah, And Heather's been such a blessing. It's been right hand. So I know she's going to be uh, empowered and quick. Next Sunday, there's going to be a quick presentation for what the children have learned over this last year plus. So it'll be exciting, plus in a lunch for the children's workers. So really is a perfect time. If you were saying, Lord, where can I serve? It's right here is key. Uh, Remy? And it is the key. I think we all look out there and we see what our children are being bombarded with. And at some place in their lives, they have to be able to have the truth spoken to them and even just get a sense of feeling the spirit of God. I'm telling you that internet is taking so much influence over the minds and hearts of our young people, even ones that know the Lord. Half the time they don't even know what the truth is. So it's just vital right now, even if you're just in the nursery and they get to feel for just a second the love of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remy, would you like to... Okay. I just wanted to piggyback on that sign up for children's workers. Oh, am I on? You are. Real quick, that um, there's going to be one of my special cakes, double chocolate, with sprinkled with powder. It takes like seven hours to make. So that's going to be back there where you sign up. Whoa. So children's workers, please feel free to get a big slice of that afterward. Okay. So the last time they were sending us off, I didn't get to say this, so I really want to say it this time. It'll only take 30 seconds. Um, 
my, our journey with, with Jubilee has been like that Andre Crouch song, Through It All, that you know, you know, I've had many tears and sorrows, questions for tomorrow, I didn't know what to do, but through every situation, God was my blessed consolation, and he helped me know that I was his own. And so, you know, Jubilee to us has always been not just a place where you can really get the word straight from straight from heaven, because Pastor Steve spends so much time in the presence of the Lord, but the worship is really good, which is really great for your soul. But it's our family. It's been our, been our, you've been our family since 1990. So I just wanted you to sing this one line of this song for me, because it represents our journey with you through it all. You know, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Yeah. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, oh, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When Pastor Steve um, prayed for us in the, in the last staff meeting, he said, this blessed me so much. He said, the Enobakares are a part of Jubilee. And the Enobakres will always be a part yep. of Jubilee. Yep. And that is true. We always, I don't care where we are, you're going to be our family. In fact, we're going to be tuning in all the time. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Eddie? It's been a blessing here, Pastor Steve. I am. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because Pastor Steve came in, you baptized our children. Joshua was two years old. He's, he just got married. He just got married. And when my brother passed, before he passed, you baptized him, my older mm -hmm. brother. Yeah. And when he passed, you had a funeral for him. We buried him in Camarillo right here, my older brother. So we have a lot of history here with uh, Jubilee Church. But I have a few words that I believe the Lord has given me for Jubilee. Several years ago, a man of God came here, Pastor Steve. They were just building the, the, the flame exit from 101. I don't know if you guys recall, if you've been here. He said that exit here is being built for the crowd that's going to come so they have the entrance to Jubilee Church that stayed with me I said Lord he's going to bring it to pass now there was a word of the Lord that came to me in the prayer room years ago Pastor Steve maybe more recently where the Lord was telling me that Many people left Jubilee because of offenses. People got offended at each other and they left. And like Paul Cain said to us one time when he came here, he said, sometimes God offends the mind to reveal the heart. He does that. He's done that in my life. If he hasn't done it in your life yet, he's going to do it. <laughs> and so the word of the Lord was this God is going to one by one reveal those hearts yes, yes. Yes. and he's going to bring them here one by one not as they were but as they're going to be they're going to come they're going to come they're going to lay down their offenses and they could to come to serve the Lord here. This is ground zero for what God is about to do, Pastor Steve. This is ground zero. He's going to bring us to the point of humility, every single one of us. We are going to realize that if God does not show up, we're doomed. In that desperation, when we seek the Lord and say, Lord, our eyes are on you. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, bless us. Show us the Lord. Show us your face. 
you mind if I pray over what you believe? Please, us? please. Let's all stand together. Receive the blessing. The word of the Lord over you, Jubilee, is this. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God has not tolerated in my life I would never a casual relationship with him. He wants a profound and deep and loving relationship with him that died for us. Unto you, Lord, we come. We say, Lord Jesus, you died for us. You laid on our lives or your life for us that we should no longer serve ourselves. But he that died and rose again for us. And so we ask for your grace to be upon us, all of us, Lord. As we wait for the great thing you're going to do in this place. Yes, indeed, God is going to bring forgiveness and repentance. And everyone, every one of us, we see it. Every one of us, we see it. We give you all the glory, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. Oh, you pray a minute over all things in our lives, every single thing. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 Let's stretch out our hands to the Mbakaris to send them and then to Heather to place. Father, we just thank you. Um, there is a deep deposit of the kingdom in this couple and they carry it and they are on their way to Florida to bring it with them to be appointed in the land of Florida. You will place them in a church that will cause, that will, will prosper because of them as they will prosper in the midst of them. We declare that the work will be uh, very fruitful and that you will command blessing upon the work of Eddie's hands. Even witty inventions that have never yet been seen that will begin to become forth and shifting all of the circumstances and all life. Bless Remy in her ministry to continue to the children, the children of God's house, and give her favor and establish and bless her going out and they're coming in. Can preserve them, protect them, and receive them. We send them out with a free and a big heart. And we ask for 20 more in a bakeries, families of this caliber for the move of God that you're bringing as you move your people together here. Bless you. Now, Lord, we thank you for Heather, Lord, who is a heart of gold, tender in the Lord, willing to serve, has been a blessing to Remy through this entire year. We sent her and her children, and they've blessed us in many ways. Now, Lord, we ask you to give her the grace that's upon uh, Remy, the spirit upon Remy, the, the, the freedom to move and begin the next phase of the children's ministry this year. And grace rest upon her immediately. We welcome her. We support her. We'll hold her up in prayer. We'll call forth the fullness of God's blessing upon her and her family. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And Heather, I just want to put my mantle of, of ministry Hallelujah. upon you. Symbolically, I gotta give this back to Carol after me because I <laughs> borrowed it from her. <laughs> but in Jesus' name, may you bear the anointing, yes. the full anointing of ministry for the children of Jubilee Church. May his spirit rest on you every time you get up to teach them, as you prepare for them, in every way. May his spirit guide you and just fully inhabit you for this for this ministry to which you've been called. And may you go forth in power yes. and in love yes. with all of the grace of God upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If Gabe and Zixi, you guys, Jillian. Grace, you want to come up to? Yeah. We are going to miss you, 
and we wanted to bless you and we wanted to give you some cards that they made to bless you because we are really sad to see you go and we're going to miss you. Forever. And you know, the big joke is we always come back, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, Brian yeah. said, <laughs> Pastor C said in 10 years, he'll be back. And I'll be like, okay, kids, this little 70 year old Miss Inabakri is wanting you to dance the Nigerian dance and do this, the worship with him. So. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, that we, children, you get to be dismissed, high school dismissed, and uh, we got a couple of quick announcements that Cammie wants to mark, and have a seat. Thank you, guys. Love you. We just praise God. Okay, ladies, I just want to bring you a save the day. Um, I don't know if you have something to write on. I think by next week we'll really actually have paperwork, but you guys all know how bad I am with details. So it is Saturday, November 4th, 10 o'clock I think is the right time. So just get the Saturday, November 4th, save the day. We're having a follow Jesus into victory women's day. Oh, and you yeah. know how many times we heard this morning victory? Yep. When I woke up this morning, I heard, it was really funny, I heard the battle hymn of the Republic. And I believe, not just nationally, but uh, over our circumstances, our individual crises, whatever testing we're in, everybody's in so much testing right now. And I really believe that is because we are getting ready to do the very assignment that God called us to do. We've been reading our word like nothing else all year long, getting that sword sharpened, and we're about ready to move forward as his boots on the ground, his army here. So, but anyways, I'd heard the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and I believe that the lightning has been loosed from his terrible swift sword over us. Mm, praise God. I received that. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's my, uh, so November 4th. That was my assignment. Chris gave me this assignment to do, and I'm like, I don't know. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Children's ministry, please make get your way back there to sign up afterwards. Wednesdays have become intercession Wednesdays. They begin at 6 a.m. through 6 p.m. And then our service is intercession. But it's one in which everyone is coming into agreement and we're partnering with the Lord. We're going to talk some more about that today. And it's going to go through 2024. So we're, we're, it's perfect time to get your, to, to bring, get your sword sharp and become a part of this army of worship warriors. And it's for the such a time, and I've shared. And then I think the last thing is we have friends and family all throughout Israel, churches, ministries, that we will be sending money to from Ashdod all the way up to Haifa, places that are messianic believers that are, that are right there to help in the war crises and, and the effects of that war. So if you'd like to give and you say, I want to sow into Israel, which is always a good thing to do, just write in your check or go online, but say, just send it to Israel and uh, write Israel on your memo. Or there's also on our, uh, on our website is also the Jubilee Humanitarian Aid. E either way, once it gets Israel, we're going to just start dispersing it throughout the land to, the, to all of the ministries we know and who are reaching out right now because they're engaged in the impact of everything that's happening. So bless you on that. And um, that's it. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So if you'll turn with me to Psalm 2, I want to do three things. Uh, Cammie's right, and you'll know it to be so for your own life. We were, we, were, we were brought into the kingdom for such a time as this, this hour, this moment. And we, this whole call to intercession, to set our Wednesday services into intercessions. You'll hear from Eddie some more on Wednesday too because he's carrying a prophetic 
promise over us and, and he has faith that needs to be transferred that we can all catch. So that's going to happen. Uh, we're going to learn and enter in and be used by God to change the course of Israel, of America, of nations, and the awakening of his church. We will not do it politically. We will not do it economically. We will not even try to do it with social media. We're going to do it in Christ from his intercession, Holy Spirit's intercession, as he begins to set his order in the earth as it needs to be. Things are going to stop going out of, out of order. They will go forward in order. And that doesn't mean they won't go into more disorder because his voice is speaking from heaven and shaking heaven and earth. So we're not looking to, you know, steady the boat, so to speak. We're looking to partner in agreement with the Lord Jesus, who is king and who is judge and who is the lawgiver, to establish what he needs and wants done. And he's looked for that intercession on the earth that's not from a point of need, but is from the point of promise, from the point of the answer. So I want to share of three, two things. And the, what's going to happen in Ephesians chapter 3, I'll, I'll bring you this. I've never, I've known this since I was a baby believer, but I never saw how it would one day fully ever start to manifest until now it is. Ephesians chapter 3, there is in this glorious uh, mystery of Christ, it closes with a, de a statement that uh, why all this was happening. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8. And Paul says to me, who am less than the least of the, all the saints, that I should preach among the nations, Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ. We are people that are learning the riches of Christ. And to make all see what is the fellowship of this mystery. We are all one body, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And we are going to be forced into oneness in whether we want to or not. And to see the hidden, the, what, what in the, uh, which was the big mystery, which from the beginning of the ages, so before time began, has been hidden in God. The, nothing happened in the garden. When, when the serpent sl slithered in and deceived Eve and Adam went into high treason, God was not shocked. He had already understood this would happen and it would be a part of redemption for that he himself, God the Son, would become the Son of Man and pay the price for that sin and bring forth a whole new creation from living souls to life-giving spirits. And this was all there. So nothing's happening on the earth today. Nothing. Nothing that is not within God's scope and sequence. Now, he goes on. He says that we would, that he created all these things through Jesus Christ. The first creation was the word spoken. The second creation was the word made flesh. And then through disarming, or as he said, he abolished sin. He did away with it by himself, then sat at the right hand of God. And now the new creation. To the intent. Now, here's God's plan. To the intent, this was from the beginning. This was in Father's mind in the garden. This was in Father, Son, Holy Spirit when they created man and woman. That they might intent that now the manifold wisdom of God. Now, the word manifold is multifaceted. So whatever God's doing on one level, he's doing something different on another level. He's never, uh, he's multifaceted. It would be like a light, pure light going into a prism and then it breaks open into a rainbow. He has a rainbow around his throne. So there are multifaceted parts of the wisdom of God and that will be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Now that's where we're headed. That's where we've been forced into. That's where we're going to be picked up and, and quickly recalled. 
Israel had to uh, call in 360,000 reservists because of this war. Well, God is calling forth his reservists. Those who have been intercessors, those who have laid down their life, those who have been called to be a part of, of God's purpose, and they're, they're setting aside their agendas, they're leaving their own activities, and they're going to one thing to, to sign up for the thing that God's doing. And he's going to make known by the church to the principalities, powers, and heavenly place. What's he going to make known? According to the eternal purpose. Again, everything is eternal with God. Everything on the earth is temporary. Everything God is eternal, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are a people in Christ. All things have been accomplished in Christ. God the Father has accomplished all things in the Son. He is now the intercessor over the house of God, and we come to God through him and come into greater salvation because of his intercession over us. And all of this is accomplished. So first thing we have to return to is victory. Victory has nothing to do with whether we live or die. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ. He has triumphed. No matter what we go through, we leads us in triumph. So he goes and... Uh, going to give us three scriptures that you can begin to declare out loud unto the Lord so that you might have a position of where to, to, to hold yourself in scripture, in truth. And then I want to talk about the heart that has to continually return to the Lord so that we walk in the spirit of Christ. So if, if, uh, Psalm 2. Now, Everything Jesus did on the earth was according to Scripture. Even when he is being arrested and his disciples are ready to defend him, he says, how then can the Scripture be fulfilled? He said he could have brought 6,000 angels to, to just annihilate this effort of arrest. But then, he says, how then could the Scripture be fulfilled? Everything in life is about the scripture being fulfilled. And he said, after his resurrection, thus it was written, thus it was necessary that the Christ should suffer and enter into his glory. You and I do not escape scripture. We are a part of a script. God the Father and wrote that God the Son is the star of, that the Spirit of God is the producer, to which we are all a part of an outworking and then an in-gathering, and one day we will all be summed up in one. And we won't be, we will be celebrating the unity that we've come into of the Spirit and of the knowledge of the Son of God and of the faith. So that's where we're headed. So Psalm 2 is the most powerful psalm. Psalm, and it is, it is when we stand in the midst of conflict, we have to stand inside Scripture or we'll miss the point of what the conflict's for or why the conflict is or how God's going to resolve the conflict. In Psalms, never is a man's name mentioned as the enemy. It's only nations can be mentioned, not the king. It can be in, in a particular individual insulting a God's cause. The individual is never given the credit or the name recognition. The only name that's lifted up in the book of Psalms is God's. It is a, God, it is a psalm of praise. It is songs of courage. It is songs of dedication. It is songs that, that allow the, the, the fullness of the Lord. So Psalm 2 is the most, we'll start with that. And I'd like you to stand up with me. I know, you know, you know this. I've been living in this for six years. I, and, and it's, our, we're just going to declare it. We'll go slowly. Because this will explain why we're in conflict, why Hamas is attacking Israel, why the earth is in constant violent re, uh, problems. Why do the nations rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord 
and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Sorry. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Thus saith the Lord, the word of God. Let's go to Psalm 110 while we're standing. That is, that psalm, when you say it out loud and declare it in the name of Jesus, you begin to shift everything. It has to conform. It addresses everything. The whole war that was built in Israel is a war of covenant against God. And therefore, it is going to be stopped. It will not succeed. And God's going to accomplish what he wants through it. That Psalm 2 and Psalm 110 are the foundation psalms of the new covenant. And we're, we're, they're, they're throughout the epistles and throughout the uh, book of Acts. And even Jesus quotes this psalm right at this first verse. Because this is how the prophetic scripture were declaring before he was here that this is indeed why he was here and who he is and what's come of his resurrection. So, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. Now again, that's addressing everything. Everything. Now, Psalm 83 there are many, 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 many places, but I believe Psalm 83 is a very good psalm in particular to the war going on and to all its ramifications and to how we can stand with Israel by standing in Christ in agreement. This is a prophetic psalm. don't know if it is being fulfilled now, but it, was, it speaks of war that had never yet fully happened, and it already includes many of the members, nations that are, ha that are a part of what is the current conflict. So in any case, it addresses, we need your help, and how you're going to help us, and how you're going to deal with this, and that's why I think it's a very 
a powerful psalm. I've been speaking it now every day since the war broke out because it, I find, uh, again, uh, agreement in the spirit and peace to, to look at things. Um, so I'm not looking to the news to find out how things are going. I'm looking to this truth. So it uh, begins with the call out, then it speaks of the problem, and then it asks God to deal with it. So let's read together first time for some of us. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. They have consulted together with one consent. They have formed a confederacy against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, Selah. Deal with them as with Midian, as with Sisera, as with Jabin at the brook of Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became a refuse on the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, Yes, all their princes like Zeba and Zamuna, who said, Let us take for ourselves the pastures of God for a possession. My God, make them like the whirling dust, like the chaff before the wind, as the fire burns the woods, as the flame sets the mountains on fire. So pursue them with your tempest and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek your name, O Lord. O let them be confounded and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be put to shame and perish that they may know that you, whose name alone is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. To say his name again, Jesus, Jesus, we bless you, we praise you. All right, now you may be seated just uh, in that, and I want to address a couple of items that are really going to be wonderfully important. The reason I believe the Scripture is the most important thing to use in this hour is because the Scripture is the only thing that comes from, uh, from the mo total mo uh, influence of the Holy Spirit, the move of God upon holy men and holy women that have written this. So we, we, and we do not then place our emotions in it, although our emotions are certainly getting connected to them, and our interpretations. Um, I'm going to go to Act, uh, Luke chapter 9. Uh, in a, the, the key of what we're facing is that we are, first and foremost, we're going to learn how to abide. The Lord's been having me in that place for 12 years, and I, it is the secret to intercession and the, answer, and the key to answered prayer, and we'll learn to do that together. And it, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask whatever you desire. It will be done for you. And by this, my Father will be glorified that you bear much fruit. And so you will be my disciples. And so this fruit-bearing answered prayer through abiding in Christ's word, abiding us, is the maturity of the church. Now, to abide in Jesus today means we abide with him seated at the right hand of God. We learn that when he was made alive, we were made alive together, Ephesians 2. When he was raised, we were raised together with him, Ephesians 2. When he was seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly places, we were seated together with him in Christ, Ephesians 2. So I pray from there. I do not pray from here. 
I do not pray from the problem. I do not pray from the news leads. I pray from where he is in totality of full completion. He has been, he is, has supremacy. He has all sufficiency. He is the first of everything. He, he holds total victory. Nothing, nothing now happens without God's purposes to bring about his set victory in Christ. But he established the eternal purpose in Christ before the ages he was accomplished. So I have to pray that way. Now I'm just like you. I will become frustrated. I become fearful. I get angry. I get overwhelmed. I hear too much, see too much. I think what will ever happen? I try to figure out what that means and come up with my solution. I try to stop things from happening. It's called control. Fear and control. And we're all born with it because our soul has been disconnected in that we are connected inside of our flesh and our blood. Our, and we are aware of the world we live in. And we are conscious that we are alone. Just like Adam, we hide ourselves from the voice of God. We retreat. We try to protect. And that God has a, a beautiful path that's saving our soul. And it's our faith. And practicing living by faith and not by sight. So we're learning to continue to return to the truth and to pray from that place. And we've been given all of the New Testament to establish that truth. That we have boldness to come into the Holy of Holies by the blood. That we come through the new and living way which God consecrated through Jesus in his flesh and his resurrection. That he is the high priest over the house of God. And we draw near with the true heart. And while there, in honesty before God, fully assured that we're accepted in the beloved, we can share our heart, we can share our burden, we can unburden our soul, we can tell the truth, here's how I'm doing, and I'm not doing good, I'm worn out. But you are victorious and triumphant, and you are my strength, so I come here. Amen. We agree with the truth. We share the reality. We unburden our heart. We don't try to... Deny the reality. C.S. Lewis did a brilliant il illustration in the screw tape letters. Cammie and I got to listen to this year. And uh, as this ain't old demons teaching demons how to, to, to take Christians out of the service and first stop them from being believers, and then if they become believers, keep them from being effective. And one thing that just has riveted my, my prayer life He's telling his uh, protege, who's now he's had to scold, you lost this one. He's become a believer. But not all, we're not, we're, not all hope is lost, for there's many ways to cause them to be ineffective and to transfer them out back into our camp. And he says one thing. And then he's, he says, what you must do now that he started praying, which was a real, he said, that's, that's really bad news. But again, not all is lost. If he will pray to try to change how he feels and resolve the, pro the problems within his prayer, then you've got him. But if he ever prays to God, if he ever talks to the Father or talks to Jesus, then we are lost because he's no longer praying as what so much of the religions of the earth do. is It's like self-meditation, self-medication, self, how do I feel better? How do I zoom and boom? How do I declare and make myself strong and rally? No, now he's talking to God. And he's telling God the Father in acceptance inside of the beloved. My soul is, feels distressed. It's, it's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm upset. I, why am I upset? Why are you upset? And, and we begin to come back into, Father God, I need help here today. I'm weak. God loves weakness in the body because that's where he puts strength upon. He does not put strength on strength. He does not use the flesh of man. The, and we are there. That's what we're learning. Now, here's the situation in the earth. Nobody's righteous. Israel is a wicked nation. America is a wicked nation per capita. They're righteous within, but they're many wicked within. 
who have rejected God, who said, I'll have nothing to do with you. You'll not rule over us. You don't get your, you don't get your produce from the vin, vine, vineyard. We're going to keep it. We're going to have it. We're going to do our own thing. We're going to live in the, 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 the depravity of our mind because we won't be glorify you nor be thankful. And the state is, is all over the earth. I can't point to any place. I can't point to my heart with confidence. I would never stand before God and say, I know that I am a wholly given person to you because I know that God shows up in my life in his glory of his holiness. I will be on the ground and I'll be crying out, God, have mercy on me. I'm an unclean, I have unclean lips and amongst unclean people. I might see the unclean people all around, but until I see the Lord, I won't see me. And until I see me, I won't know what it is he's after. We read in today's scriptures in Luke 6, he says, why do you say to your brother who's got a splinter or a little sawdust in his eye, let me take that out for you when you don't have, or even can't see that you've got a beam in your own eye. And then he says timeless words. He says, first take the beam out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly to take the splinter. Now, at first, it sounds like he's a scolding word, but it's really a, it's a healing word. It's the path of healing, path of salvation, path of deliverance. Everything happens this way. I cannot help someone in an area of freedom until I have been made free there myself. And if I think I don't need to be free and I can instruct people, I'm like Romans 2. I think I understand the word. I'll just tell you what the word says. You got to do what the word. No. That, there's, there's, there's such self-deception because we say, but we don't do. We believe because we understand something, we are free to carry, live out however we live out. And we don't see our heart. We don't see the wickedness. We don't see that adultery is just lusting after women on the internet. We don't know how many people we fornicated with during the week. It's not something we're thinking about. We don't know how much we lust over f money and want control and how much we love the world. We didn't think we loved the world, just wanted to be rich. We don't see stuff unless the Lord shows me myself, and I don't see myself unless I see him, because he's the standard. And I want that, and I need that. When I first was looking, where do I start with my prayer of agreement in intercession with Jesus for Israel? I, there are multiple Psalms, and one of them is a Psalm that David relates when Saul was sent men to kill him while he was still living in the palace and Michal, Michael was his wife. But in the psalm it says, oh, for no reason for myself, they've come to take my life. And I said, well, that isn't true. Can't use that one. Right? I mean, would any of us say, Lord, because I'm righteous, deliver me? Because I've not sinned, I want you to come save me for my righteousness. No, we, 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 we know that. That's why we're not stoning women caught in adultery. Because Jesus made it a point that the whole kingdom is internal. And I'm going to get to the heart issue of everybody. And if everybody does not submit to the heart issue, then they're just going to be hypocrites. And I'll get you on a physical level, and then you'll get back to your heart level. So he's after us. So, Ephesians, Luke chapter 9, verse 51. And I, I will close with this because this and, and Romans 12. Hamas is being driven by a, a, a principality of hatred and absolute mayhem and murder. But so are other nations and they're going places. And God's, we're all cousins. We can't go in and deal with things that we'd like to deal with because we would not be righteous. If David could not kill King Saul, although he had been prophesied to become the king and was the king, anointed by Samuel, but he could not kill Saul because if he touched the anointed, he would not be guiltless. God has made it that we have to love humanity in a way that restrains us from acting out in insolence and pride and, you know, kill them all attitude. So this, now it came to pass when the time had come for him, Jesus, to be received up. 
Oh, beloved, we're going to become such positive people because we're going to see right through the death to the conclusion. And whatever we got to walk through, we're going to walk through it without stopping there or avoiding it. We're just going to go through it. When it says received up, it's the word ascension. So Jesus says, it's time for my ascension. Every time he spoke of his mockery and his crucifixion and his death, he then always concluded it, and on the third day I'll be raised. So he knew where he was headed. And he steadfastly, uh, resolutely set his face to go to Jerusalem. So there's there's settings of time that God says, okay, it's time, and I'm going to need you to step into the, into uh, just unrelented, just pursuit. You're going to stay in this way. And so he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers before his face. It becomes apparent. We will not hide in our Christianity in the days ahead. We won't have to be obnoxious, but we won't hide because it will become apparent to us and to others that we're in a pursuit to be behold and be before and to serve our king. He says, they went and they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. So, Jesus is not welcome because he's going to Jerusalem. This massive prejudice, this self-hate, this hatred, this ancient conflicts that are going. Samaritan, uh, I won't divert. And when his disciples, James and John, the sons of thunder, he called them, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? Jesus turned to them and rebuked them. We're going to be rebuked soundly by Jesus and the Spirit of God multiple times. Be prepared. Because if we don't, we won't be able to discern and walk with him in agreement. Because he said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. So, evidently, They were being influenced demonically, fleshly, worldly, self-interestly. And they didn't even know it because they had Scripture and a Bible story to relate to. Right? Peter was given the vision, the revelation that he was the Christ, but the interpretation came from the devil because he saw there was no purpose of a death of the leader well, so that can't be God's plan. So he, this is the multifaceted, multifaceted wisdom of God. You don't know what manner of spirit you are, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Jesus came to save lives. He did not come to call the righteous but the sinner to repentance. He has a purpose in all that we're in to bring great salvation to himself. I see him high and lifted up. He is Lord of Gaza. He is Lord of Hamas. Does not mean they worship him. Or that he's welcoming with their actions. I just means he's the boss of everybody. Nobody can withstand once he determines this must stop. This will go forward. This gets to accelerate. This gets to stop. And he's Lord. So he's a deliverer of the hostages. And he understands the, the drama and the pain and the loss. And yet elevated in the spirit agreeing with Jesus, seated with him at the right hand of heaven. It's if for any one believer can be given the word of command that says, now command my hostages to be released and return to their homes and their families now. And that truth that he is able, it's all based on ability. The leper came and said, if you are willing, you are able to make me clean. 
Abraham said, I am convinced that be what you promised, you're able to perform. So God is able to extrapolate in the midst of this war that's, this, um, this is wrong and, and, and we do not want war. Opposite of war is revival. The opposite of revival is war. It dismantles. It, it, but in the midst of it, he can move mightily and bring about great salvation. But I've got to watch my heart. I can't hate people. I've got to have a burden for the, for the two and a half million Palestinians in Gaza and say, Lord, I want them to be saved. I've got to have a burden. I, wherever I, if I'm an intercessor stands in a position of lack and separation from the completion and starts to hold the place and, and doesn't just uh, walk away and say, well, I don't really care about that group. I can't, I can't be happy when one, my enemy perishes and my, my friend is helped. I have to feel this. That's, that's, I have to have the same posture. Let God get a hold of my heart. Because he said, you don't know what spirits you have. You, you, I didn't come to destroy man's life. I believe the reason for the call of intercession up to heaven, from heaven to us, and is because... There, there, is, there is many who are in the valley of indecision and they need to be saved. There are, the, har- the w- summer's passed, the harvest has come, and we're still not saved. The, there's just a lackadaisical indifference. Who cares? What does it matter? It's not my problem. And now God's going to just help us all by making it all our problem. Whatever happens to Israel happens to the whole entire world. Not only is it the pupil of God's eye and that you don't touch it, it's the, it's the way in which you see what's coming. Whatever happens first to Israel will happen next to the church. So it's imperative that we stand in agreement and say, Lord, I, I, but I don't know how to tell you what to do. I don't know who you should kill. I don't know who you shouldn't kill. I don't know what you're doing. I, uh, these Psalms, Psalm 2 and Psalm 10, 110 for six years, they bothered me. Or for the first three years, they bothered me because there was so much of God doing, doing work of vengeance in the midst of them that I thought, oh, gosh. But now I've had to conclude that the only one who can do exercise vengeance is the Lord. Romans 12, and then I pray. Uh, praise you, Jesus. We're being called up. It's, it's, it, we're, we're just being called up. We're being called up. And here we are together in chapter 12, verse 15. We'll finish this demanding, wonder like an epistle of the, of the commands of the kingdom. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. He's the only one that can look at 8 billion souls on this planet and say, if I have to start judging and dealing with things, I alone am allowed to do so. And the only one who can do so. Because I understand what you cannot see. I will repay. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. And then the last statement. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is going to be, we can either go into indifference, passivity, take an American attitude, it doesn't touch me, so why bother? That's, that's really bad. But we can also get very violent and vile and hateful and spiteful and actually become a contributor to Satan's kingdom while preaching and proclaiming God's word. That's what he said. Don't be overcome by evil. Don't, don't come under evil. Don't come under evil by evil. Don't come under it. Don't be overcome by it by coming under it. Don't imbibe it. 
Jesus was rejected by Samaria. They wanted to reject Samaria really big. You can't do that. That's the wrong spirit. This, you only empower evil. Every time I become angry, anger has grown. Wrath grows. But overcome evil with good. So here is going to be the challenge. I've already, I've only had a week in it. I've been caught so many times. Lord says, you're in the wrong spirit, Steve. That's just the flesh, Steve. That's just your own opinion, Steve. You just think you want it to go that way because you'd rather it avoid your problem. Just, but that's what an intercessor can be moved out of dogmatic, declarative. God doesn't care. God cares about every individual and every person and will judge everything that we all do. All will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for everything we did. <laughs> so we have to move with this, this tenderness, Lord. Save, save, save. Save that city of Samaria that couldn't understand the, the Messiah that was coming to die for them too. Save Hamas. Break into their war rooms and bring the revelation of the Messiah. The ancient hatreds that have grown over centuries and millennials. The rivalries between cousins. The, the, the rejection perceived. And then ever since Cain killed Abel and sought to remove righteousness through murder. Oh God, come. Move amongst Israel who have forgotten you in so many ways. And in the ways they've tried to remember you, they have rejected your Messiah and unwilling to receive. Come into America, to which so many ways, Lord, we have walked about as though we were righteous because we consider ourselves more righteous than the world. Forgive us. Lord, we declare that you alone are, are able to move amongst the earth. You've declared that wars will increase, rumors of wars will be heard, Earthquakes will be everywhere. Famine will hit the land. Afghanistan has had three earthquakes in one week. We cannot look to one country and say you're more wicked than another country because Jesus made it a point that unless all of us repent, we'll all perish. So we always are returning our heart. Lord, if we have put our heart of... <sighs> Holy Spirit, help us. You're the only one that can bring the Spirit of Christ into the earth. You're the only one convict of sin and righteousness and judgment. You're the only one that can truly be the demonstration of kingdom and power. Come. Go ahead, guys. Come. Lord, and when you come and you, I know you are, you put us into global conflicts because you want to deal with local issues. So we ask, Lord, where we have become angry at our neighbors, where we have spoken evil or even plotted their demise, we ask you, please forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. It's not for us to destroy men's lives, but to see them get saved. Lord, where our families have been estranged, marriages have been separated, we've departed from one another, we've used separation as a way we solve our problems. Well, God, please come. Oh, he's coming. Help us out. Help us. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Jesus, the safest word we'll say. Over every fear and anxiety. To every soul. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Sing, I just want to speak the name of Jesus again. I just want to speak the name of Come on, church, Jesus. sing it with me. Over all fear. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive. 
victory in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We pray in victory. We stand in victory. I just want to speak in the name of Jesus. Where every fear and all anxiety. Yes, Lord. Every soul, every soul held captive by depression we speak Jesus if you'll hold your hands up please together I believe the Lord would bring not only this global application of faith but this personal application where we are struggling where trouble has come to our borders where things have been taken captive held hostage by our adversary souls that are no longer free to flow and respond let's just allow that name one more time to be sung to us Lord I bless this body called up into intercession that you will equip us train us continually lead us and, and enable us to be used as your sword in your hand for your purposes throughout the lands of the earth today and we just ask that all that you are doing you do within and all that you do within move it without in Jesus name in Jesus name we can go out in the love and mercies of God prayer begins at 6 in the morning and 6 p.m. it will conclude in the watches 6 p.m. to 7.30 we'll have our intercessory corporate prayer it will be online Everyone to have an open mic will be a part of learning the sound and praying the right spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go out in the love and let this song kind of carry you into the next season.